So this is the practice for tonight, the equilibrium worksheet. For number one, it gives us a reaction, and it tells us the equilibrium concentrations, and then it tells us to find the value. So first thing we're going to do is write out the equation. And the first thing we should think about is the ice table. Now in this case, it actually gives us the concentrations, meaning the molarity, at equilibrium. So even though I wrote out the ice table, we know what the concentrations are. For PCL3, it's 0 0.229, and there it's 0 0.229. And then from this equation, we should be able to write out uh, K equilibrium equation, which is the products divided by the reactants, the concentration of. So in this case, it's PCl3 times Cl2 divided by PCl5. And then it's a matter of plugging in the numbers. So here we have the equilibrium concentration of PCl3. Here we have the equilibrium concentration of Cl2. And then here we have the equilibrium concentration of PCl5. In this one, it's pretty straightforward. There is no squares or anything of that nature. So all you're doing is multiplying and dividing by the number. And you should get a K equilibrium that is equal to 0 0.04125. For number two, we have something similar. We have a reaction. A plus B gives you C plus D. Let's do the ice table. And once again here, the, what's given is the concentrations at equilibrium. And that's the important part. And it says both A and B are 3.23 times 10 to the power of negative 5. And it says for both C and D, they're 1.27 times 10 to the power of negative 2. So it's both, and I just wrote it that way because I'm running out of space. So from that equation up here, we should be able to write out the K equilibrium, which is the concentration of C times the concentration of D divided by the concentrations of A and B. And once you plug in those numbers, and be careful with the notations, when you multiply them, we should get a K equilibrium that is equal to 1.55 times 10 to the negative 13. For number three, again, we're given equilibrium concentrations, but once again, we write out our ice tables. And for A and B, it's both 7.02 times 10 to the negative three. And for C, it is 2.16 times 10 to the negative and then from the reaction itself, we should be able to write out the K equilibrium. In this case, it's the concentration of C squared, because we have that coefficient over here, divided by the concentrations of A times the concentration of B, which are both the reactants. So the only thing we have to be careful about is when we plug this number in here, we have to make sure that we're squaring it, and then it's just a matter of putting this number for both A and B. And the K equilibrium here that we find should be equal to 4.39 times 10 to the power of negative 8. And for the last one, we have a equation CO plus 2H2 gives CH3OH. And in this case, once again, we're given the equilibrium concentrations for everything except for H2 and we're given the K equilibrium. So first let's write out our ice table. For the equilibrium concentration we have for the CH3OH 0 0.818 molarity and we have to make sure that it's molarity in the equilibrium concentration and then it says that we have 1.402 molarity for the CO. Now it's saying calculate the H2. So just based off of this we would not be able to just yet. However, it does give us the number for the K equilibrium constant. 
So we can write out this reaction as K equilibrium is equal to CH3OH, the concentration of it, which is given, divided by the concentration of Cl, which is also given, times the concentration of H2 squared. So the K equilibrium is that right there, and we plug that in, and then we have the concentration of Cl, which we plug in there, and then we have the concentration of CH3OH, and we plug that in right there. Now the only thing that's tricky in this one is that the variable that we're trying to find is in the denominator, and it's also being squared. So let's actually go through this one. So we have 1.609 is equal to 0 0.818 divided by 1.402 times the concentration of H2 squared. So 0 0.818 divided by 1.402, we can do that part. So that part should just be 0 0.5 eight three and we have remember h2 on the bottom part because it's in the denominator and this is equal to 1.609 at this point we can cross multiply to get that concentration of h2 squared to the numerator side so we can do that and that and what we should get is, on its own, h2 squared, into the numerator side, is equal to 0 0.583 divided by 1.609. This is equal to 0.3626. And remember that that is the concentration of h2 squared. So we need to get rid of that squared. So we do the square root and we get that the concentration of H2 is equal to 0 0.602 and that is what they're asking for in that question